Hi everyone. I hope you've had a great week. This week we're going to talk about lessons 77 to 80. So let's get started. This week you're going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheet book, the math card games manual and the game cards, the AL abacus, which is actually optional this week, the short multiplication table or appendix one, that again is also optional. And you'll also need the full fraction chart and the fraction pieces. Now this week, your child is going to prepare for the assessment. You're going to do the assessment and then continue working on fractions. Let's get started by turning to lesson 77. There are actually two corrections for this lesson. The one correction is for manuals that were printed in 2016 and earlier. And then the other correction is for manuals printed in 2017 and earlier. Make sure that if you have a manual in those years or earlier, that you check out our corrections page and make those uh, changes to your lesson manual prior to teaching this lesson. Now, lesson seven, lesson 77 is a review and it will cover concepts that they have learned all the way up to this point in level d it is designed to prepare your child for the upcoming assessment in a couple days if your child needs to use it they can use the al abacus for this review um, i would recommend though if possible to have your child try to solve the problems without using it first once your child completes the assessment review worksheet then you can go over the answers and discuss any errors that they made. Now, what you're really going to want to do is find out why they made the mistake. What was it that they made the error on and why they made a mistake? So you're going to want to kind of pull information out of your child. How did you solve this problem? And what you're going to want to really get to is, was it a silly mistake, something that they already know that they made it wrong and, oh, I should have done this and they caught it? Or was it because they didn't understand something? or do they not have a good solid understanding of their math facts? If they did not understand a concept, then you're going to want to go back and review any lessons to cover that concept, uh, review that lesson or lessons. If it was math fact oriented, then you're gonna to wanna to spend some time playing some math card games to strengthen up those math facts. Now, here are the problems from the worksheet and the lessons that you can review to work on those concepts. If your child missed problem one, which is 300 times 20, you can review lessons 19, 61, and 62. For problem two, which is 30 times seven, you can look at lessons 61 and 62. For problem three, which is 48 divided by eight, you might wanna review their multiples of eights. For problem four, which is 47 plus 65, review lessons five and six, or review their math facts. For problem five, 72 divided by eight, you can again review their multiples of eight. For problem six, which is 60 times three, take a look at lessons 61 and 62. For problem seven, which is 80 minus 19, review lessons seven, eight, and nine. For problem eight, 63 minus 25, review lessons seven, eight, and nine. For problem nine, which is 100 minus something equals 72, you can review lessons seven, eight, and nine, or lesson 59. Now this is a comprehension question regarding relationship between addition and subtraction. So it's not gonna be fully covered in those lessons, but it's making sure your child understands those concepts overall. For problems 10, 11, and 12, you can review lessons 64 and 65 for multi-digit multiplication, or you can take a look at lesson 66 for check numbers. Or if you need to, you can review their multiplication math facts. For problems 13 through 22, which is the long subtraction problem, you can review lessons 7, 8, 9, 59, and 60. For problem 23 through 25, take a look at lessons 48 and 49. For problems 26 through 37, which is the table, review lessons 44, 45, and 46. For problems 38 through 40, which, which are the matching problems, review lessons 67, 68, and 69. 
for problems 44 through 47, which are fill in the blank problems, review lesson 70. For problems 48 and 49, you can review lessons 69, 70, and 71. For problems 50 through 57, which are another group of fill in the blank problems, you can review lessons 61 and 62. For problem 58, which is a word problem, look at lessons 69 and 73. For problem 59, which is the perimeter word problem, you can take a look at lessons 63 and 64 if they struggle with the multiplication portion of that problem, or you can look at lesson 72 for the fraction portion of that lesson. For problem 60, which is the last word problem, take a look at lesson 63 and 64 for the multiplication portion of that problem, or you can look at lessons 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 for the addition and subtraction portion of that problem. Now, there is not a math card game listed for this lesson. Um, if you were not going to be reviewing previous lessons to help your child work through their errors, then you definitely are going to want to play a multiplication math card game or a game that will focus on what your child needs to uh, practice to prepare for their assessment later on this week. Let's go ahead and turn to lesson 78. This is a review day and it is designed to prepare your child again for lesson 79 for the assessment in lesson 79. The warm up will be covering different math properties, the commutative property, associative property and the distri distributive property. It is not necessary that your child knows the specific names of these properties at this time. However, your child will need to know how they work. After the warm up, your child is going to play four different math card games to prepare for their assessment. The first game is called the rounding war game. Now you play this game in lesson 44. You will want to play this game using the tens, the place value tens, and then another game using the place value cards of 100, of all of the hundreds. Now, when you're asking your child questions about those while playing those games, make sure you use as many numbers as needed so that your child has a full grasp on rounding. The next game is ring around the products game. You're going to prepare playing for this game by asking a series of multiplication problems as listed in the, on the bottom of the first page of the lesson. We do have a blog for this game, so feel free to go to our website and look it up. Um, and you also played this game in lessons 33 and 47. Now on the top of the second page of the lesson, you're going to be playing multiplying three one digit numbers game. There's not a blog for this game, but you did play it in lessons 55 and 56. Now the last, uh, last game for this day is called Concentrating on One Game. And this is a fractions game. We do have a blog for this game. Um, so feel free to look it up on our website. You also played this game in lesson 70. Now, in addition to the games, you're going to want to review any lessons or segment of lessons to prepare your child for the assessment in lesson 79. And you'll want to review based on the errors they made in the practice assessment uh, worksheet that you did in lesson 77. Okay, let's turn this lesson 79. There is a correction for this uh, lesson if you have a manual that was printed in 2016 or before. So make sure you make those changes prior to working through this lesson. This is assessment day. So you're going to want to make sure that your child is well rested and ready for the test. You may even want to have your child take the test at the better part of their day where they perform their best. Um, so for example, some kids learn uh, or take tests better earlier in the day when their mind is fresher, while other kids like mine are not always awake enough, mentally awake enough for them to take the test earlier in the day. Um, also, some kids take tests best after a light meal, but others get too tired or drained, their brain doesn't work as fresh after eating. So you're going to want to position that test in a time when you know your child performs their best. Now, once your child completes the assessment, you're going to want to discuss any errors they made. Um, you're going to, again, want to specifically find out why they made the mistake. Was it a silly mistake or did they not understand something? If your child 
uh, made an error because it was something they did not understand, you're going to want to go back and review that particular lesson, segment of lesson, or grouping of lessons. I will also include which lesson or lessons to review for each of the questions in the assessment. So if your child struggled with problem one, 4,000 times 10, review lessons 19, 61, and 62. For problem two, which is 60 times seven, review lessons 61 and 62. For problem three, which is 50, or 56 divided by eight, you can review their multiples of eight. For problem four, which is 58 plus 63, you can review lessons five and six or review their math facts. For problem seven, 72 divided by nine, you can review your multiples of either eight or nine or both. For problem six, which is 70 times four, review lessons 61 and 62. For problem seven, 90 minus 73, review lessons seven, eight, and nine. For problem eight, which is 52 minus 15, review lessons seven, eight, and nine. For problem nine, which is 100 minus something equals 69, review lessons seven, eight, nine, and 59. Again, this is a comprehension question regarding the relationship between addition and subtraction. For problems 10, 11, and 12, review lessons 64 and 65 for the multi-digit multiplication portion of this problem, or review lessons 66 if they struggle with their check numbers or review their multiplication math facts if that really is their issue, if their struggle. For problems 13 through 22, which is the very long subtraction problem, review lessons 7, 8, 9, 59, and 60. For problems 23 through 25, review lessons 48 and 49. For problems 26 through 37, which is the rounding table, you can review lessons 44, 45, and 46. For problems 38 through 43, which is the matching problem, review lessons 67, 68, and 69. For problems 44 through 47, which is in the fill in the blank problems using fractions, review lesson 70. For problems 48 and 49, review lessons 69, 70, and 71. For problems 50 through 57, which again are those fill in the blank problems, review lessons 61 and 62. For problem 58, which is the word problem, you can review lessons 69 and 73. For problem 59, which is the perimeter word problem, review lessons 63 and 64 for the multiplication part or lesson 72 for the fractions part. For problem 60, which is the last word problem on that, word, on that assessment, you can review lessons five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, once your child completes the assessment, play a math card game to celebrate. You will want to review their answers and discuss them on a separate day from the day um, that they take their test, especially if your child was stressed about that test. Then on the day that you review, you can review um, any concept that your child might still struggle with. Go back to a previous lesson and cover that material. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 80. Now, the first paragraph of the warm up is going to review time and fractions, both topics that were covered in lesson 73. The second paragraph is going to be re reviewing money and fractions, topics that were covered in lesson 74. Look at the section called denominator. When you introduce the term denominator, let, me, let your child say that after you because it's kind of a hard one to say, especially for little kids. And if it's a very new term, let them say it. You can say it several different times. Now, this lesson is only going to cover the denominator portion of the lesson, lesson 81, or of the fraction. Lesson 81 is going to talk about the numerator, but in this particular lesson, we're going to be focusing on the term denominator. And denominator means naming, kind of like naming the fraction size, half, fourths, nines, etc. That's the bottom number in the, in the fraction. Now, take a look at the section called fractions with even denominators. 
in this section, your child is going to build a partial fraction chart using only the fraction pieces with an even number in the denominator. Now make sure when you give your child instructions to do this, that you use those correct terms. This is going to help you know whether your child understands what denominator means. And then also review of what even numbers mean. After they build the partial fraction chart, make sure that they got it correct. If they did not get it correct, discuss any errors they made. Then you're going to ask questions based on that partial fraction chart. Then in the section called denominators with multiples of three, your child is again going to build a different partial fraction chart using denominators with a, in a multiple of three and only those. So you would only do the thirds, the sixes, and the nines. Again, make sure your child built that partial fraction chart correctly, go over anything that they missed, and then you're going to ask questions based on that chart. Finally, you're going to have your child build a partial fraction chart using only denominators that are multiples of five. Again, check that chart, make any corrections that are necessary, and then ask, quest ask questions about that partial chart. The game for this lesson is the game of one. This is a fun game and create can create lots of challenges, especially if you have a competitive player in your home, just like I do, they will make sure they try to trip you up. So make sure you're really good on your fractions, um, but it's a good fun game to play. In addition to this game, you're also going to want to add a multiplication math card game if your child is still struggling or needs to gain, gain some speed on their multiplication math facts. Well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions or concerns about a lesson or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We're here to help. I look forward to seeing you next week as we cover lessons 81 through 84. Have a great week, everybody.